So we're going to continue on with the part two of this book, fascinating book on psychopathy. This part of part two, this is after the clinical studies. We've already did the hypothesis. I took you to the back of the book after he'd done and surmised all his clinical investigations. So you kind of have an understanding of what he's kind of, kind of concluded about how to classify these this domain of mental mental soundness. But now we're going to see the degrees now. This is going to be important because that was sort of the more overt, obvious manifestations of this psychopathy, all the alcoholism, pauperism, criminality, hypersexuality, um, just petty crimes, fraud, and narcissistic abuse on their families. You kind of see the real gross manifestations of this, but now I told y'all that this psychopathy is being disguised and cloaked, right? So what is that gonna look like? So now he's gonna take us into like the incomplete manifestations or suggestions of the disorder, huh? These are gonna be degrees of the disguise that is essential in pathologies. Y'all ready for this? I'm ready to know what this is going to look like. That now and that is being disguised. Now, it's going to be another chapter I'm going to read to you guys called The Psychopath as a Businessman. There's another chapter here, The Psychopath as Man of the World. We have all these different identities that are out here, but they're all being masked behind this narcissistic psychopath. He also has a chapter in here called The Psychopath as a Gentleman, as they're portraying themselves to be every day. And you have The Psychopath as a Scientist. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get through all of these chapters today. You have The Psychopath as a Physician. You have The Psychopath as a Psychiatrist, because we have psychopaths in the, psych psych in the mental health field as well <clears throat> that I've been noticing. And that would be the end of looking at and viewing them as being disguised behind all of these different titles. Y'all ready for this? So I'm going to take y'all into the introduction of this. Um, before I start this chapter, I just wanted it to be a little bit more personal with you guys. Um, not doing well. I'm doing well, but I'm trying to keep it together. I'm not trying to break down. I'm just trying to keep it together. As you know, guys, we got to go inward. Whatever is conflicting you, troubling you, irritating and frustrating you in your life, we got to go inward. It's going to be the only way for us to understand the nature of our ailments. These psychopaths don't have the capacity in the in emotional integration to be able to do this. So I know I'm not a psychopath, but God is giving me the sort of ideations of a psychopath so I can understand what they're going through. It's all coming from pain underneath everything, fear and pent up anger and rage has turned into this psychopathic tendencies, these characteristics that I've been noticing in my environment is affecting me every day. I'm not gonna be vulnerable too much, but I am gonna say that it makes you wanna just go throw in the tile. <laughs> wow, how can life be so unmerciful, you asking yourself, right? I 
I've been feeling a lot of spirits of wanting to give up. And I know it's just a spirit challenging me. I've been trying to just read and keep my mind off of this, but the feeling won't go away. I don't want to say it is witchcraft. It doesn't have any control over me, but obviously I'm feeling these emotions. And God is keeping them festering in me, I guess, to try to understand something about the nature of what I'm feeling. And it has something to do with not seeing, having meaning in life. Having a purpose is going to be so crucial to getting up every day and having that determination to not give up. So you have an incentive to why you're not going to give up on your life. Whatever that not look, giving up, whatever good giving up to you looks like, you're not going to get to that point because you got that purpose there. Okay, is that going to be enough? Because everybody say, find a purpose, find a purpose. Okay, then what if you do find a purpose and it's not really giving, getting you where you want to be in life? Or it's not getting you there fast enough? Then what? Frustrations is going to happen, come up. And then the doubt and all those childhood vulnerabilities that are connected antecedently to your DNA. Yeah, all that memory comes up in you. Inferiorities, imposter syndromes, and wanting to give up. And this is where we lose our faith. And this is where I feel like I've reached the crux of prosperity. I'm in the between the cruxes of utter despair and prosperity. And I can't seem to break through that ceiling. I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> I knew God was going to be using me right now. I knew it. I couldn't just read. <laughs> okay, I'm getting goosebumps even on my leg. <laughs> I am grateful. And it does not feel good to feel like I'm being defeated. And have, nobody wants to be defeated. And nobody really wants to give up on their life. You can't honestly and logically tell me that there are people who say, I'm sick of this life. I'm going to take myself out. That they come to this conclusion simply by the fact that they don't like themselves. I doubt that that's the real reason why people take themselves out, right? So we know that there are forces that feels like pressure, it feels like you're being crushed and you're being um, oppressed. This, this feels like pain to the organism. Nobody wants to continue on with pain. Pain is going to ramp up the cortisol in your body. And this is gonna affect your nervous system and all your working moving moving parts uh, to where you do want to lose, you will lose your mind and then you will want to take yourself out because you can't function. You don't feel adapted. You don't feel understood. You will disassociate and you'll lose meaning in life. And that's why having a purpose connects us to the source of our humanities. So I guess this message is about finding some type of purpose that you can cling on to every day. Even if that purpose is to have faith in God and get, get a better relationship and a stronger relationship with God, let that be your watchword. Let that be your watchword right there. Just have your faith, right? So and when you are feeling these depressing feelings, what does that faith look like? Does it mean getting up and war with the devil and praying? Does it look like meditating and going out and to the park and going for a walk, going for a jog, doing some yoga, some stretches, listening to some good music, dancing, playing some music, creating some beats, writing a song, writing some lyrics? Does it look like smoking a blunt, listening to some reggae? What is getting connected to God looks like to you? Getting connected 
going inward with yourself looks like. And you're going to have to use this system. And some days it's going to be more challenging than others to keep this system going. But you know that that system is there and it's tied and it is tried and tested in your life. And you might go a day to slacking. But I don't want y'all to give up on yourselves when you do find yourselves getting lazy, slacking, and lethargic in life. Apathy will occur. The lassitude of life will happen. You're going to be met with the disappointment of the humdrum of life every day. Life is going to seem like it's never going to move. Never move forward. That step is going to be on your tippy toe trying to take that next step in living in utter fear and terror of the unknown. This is unknown territory, baby. This is new elevation. This is expansion. This is where that's where real restoration looks like, baby. Going deep in, inward, really bringing up that courage in yourself. You got it there with your pain, with your tears, with your anger and your frustrations. You got courage, baby determination to never give up on yourself. You better know what's on the inside of you, baby. You got DNA of royal priesthood, okay? Huh, okay, Shantae? And if you don't know, you know it now. You are a king and a queen. You better believe that. Stand in some truth and live in the authenticity of your DNA of your genetic bloodline. That's authenticity there, living and breathing in you unconsciously through your DNA, propelling you onward, forward towards your destiny that you're not fully, fully encapsulated and aware of yet, but the manifestations are being crystallized, germinating, going from a formless gas to a more crystallized, solid expression of your deepest desires starting from that thought energy it's all energy make a sound baby the energies are there in your vocal cords make a sound speak truth and life into your own life make a sound eradicate all darkness by speaking truth and love into yourself power back into your own life make a sound i am worthy i'm exquisite i'm exceptional i will never give up myself i'm a survivor I pushed through. I made it over. You say these things to yourself. You trick your subconscious into believing that you can be everything that you ever wanted to be in your life. This devil is a liar. There ain't no mental illness in hell, no psychopathy, there ain't no narcissism, there ain't no Jezebel, no warlock. They can control my life and stop me from my destiny, my true birthright. That's your only freedom out here in this world as you're out here living for this materialism and trying to climb an invisible social ladder that's only giving you preservation anxiety. You're never going to be like people who are not real humans. You're not going to be like these people, and nor do you want to be like them. You don't look up to this because it's not founded on any truth, any morality, no righteousness, and definitely no justice, which is why you feel like this is in yourself. And all around you, this is what oppression feels like. These are the systems of oppression that is hiding from your conscious awareness. You need to wake up today of what the real, true sorcery that's going on all around you in this matrix. This is a war on the mind. And if you don't have control of your mind and your heart, then you're going to be taken and swallowed up by this draconian system. Oh, yes. They're hiding in the ethers, these demons. And they're waiting and they're lurking. They follow you. And they jump into vessels to attack you in every kind of way that they can. And you might not, you might think that you're getting away from these spirits because you're living a pretty complacent, comfortable life, but that's exactly where they want you right now. This pressure that I feel right now, this feeling of utter despair and hopelessness and helplessness, that crux to where I'm in between this and my ultimate glory. I'm seeing the horizon and I know that I can't go back. I can't look back. 
giving up don't mean stopping. It don't mean stagnation because I'm improving. So I'm moving. So it don't matter what illusion this devil tries to throw up to make you think that you're stuck, that you're stagnant, that you're never going to move forward in your life, that you're limited because you have deficits. Be okay with all of this. Work on these inner things, the insecurities that will come up when you're on the, when you're in the between the cruxes of other despair and prosperity in your life. Cling on to some hope in your life with that purpose. And that means having faith in something. And if you ain't got faith in yourself, then you're going to have to give your life to something higher than you, more stronger, more powerful, more omnipotent and present. So you can always cling to that when you want to commit suicide and give up your life. And you don't have an answer and you don't have no meaning in life. And you don't care about anything. You become despondent and withdrawn and misattuned with everybody around you. Ah! You're going to fight this devil. You're going to fight this devil. We're going to defeat this devil. And devil, you're not going to win. Everything you've said about our lives, about this black community, is a lie. I rebuke every Hittite spirit. I rebuke every Hivite spirit. The Gergeshite, the Parasite, the Ahabs, the Hamish spirits, the Leviathans, the Jebusites, the Parasites, the Canaanite spirits, the Jebusbel, Jezebels, and the Warlock spirits. All of you, I'm gathering you all up. I'm bounding you in chains and fetters of iron. You better go for me, devil. You better go for me, Satan. You better go for me. My God is my rock and my deliverer. Whom shall I fear? God is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And when the wicked come to eat my flesh, they're going to stumble and fall. And though there's encampment around me, my heart shall not fear. And the war rising against me in this, I will be confident. Dwell in the house of God all the days of your life. And in trouble, she's going to hide you in the secret of her tabernacle. She's going to hide you in the secret of her tabernacle. You know what that feels like? Feels like recovery of everything that was lost, everything that was stolen from you, every lie that was told on you, every gas lit, the light, the flames of conflagrations and confusions and contention, slandering and gossip in your life. He's crazy. He's not to be trusted. He's not competent. He's irresponsible. You know the lies that have been thrown on you, that have been consigned to you, that you wear as a badge of dishonor every single day, as a garment that you cloak yourself around. You know that hood that you hide behind every day, living in all of that shame and guilt that this devil is hoping that you keep on you. Don't ever want you to take it off. Keep that on you, buddy. You look good in it. <laughs> You can trick everybody, make everybody think that you're rich, that you have prestige, you got real abundance in your life. You have to be authentic in this life. You don't got to really transform. Screw all this healing and get into salvation. It ain't real. It's, in fact, I want you to hate Christianity and hate God. Here, throw on some more deception. Throw on some more illusions. I'm going to give you all kinds of identities and have you all confused. But um, that's the source of all of it. It's never going to be self-love. It's never going to be self-acceptance. And you're going to always live and have those insecurities and those fears on the inside of you. As you're trying to wear masculinity, as you're trying to wear your proud gay identity, as you're walking around here trying to be proud and trans as well. You're still going to live in so much fear and unaccept non-acceptance in yourself as you're dealing with your dysphorias and your self-hatreds and your self-homophobias as well. Look at these illusions that this devil has thrown up at us. He never wants us to get free out of this bondage. We're still going to be trapped as we're going to churches trying to get deliverance and we're worrying about what people are wearing and who's going, what, who, who, who in here is potential for a date. Who know who? These spirits are hoping that we just get together and just keep the same chaos and and just, just being misguided. But we need some courageous people out here to wake up. It's going to be painful, this road. But you're going to have to wake up to the real true knowledge and the power of who we are. You ain't looking at a crazy person. Yes, crazy because I discovered who I was. That is so crazy in a world where they don't teach you 
about these dimensions that we can create our own world our own realities using our own thought powers they didn't teach it to everybody i realized and god has propelled me in this life and this human experience to learn this science that was living and trapped on my dna and i got awakened to this to create my own reality i could be a freaking billionaire by now think of all the influence that i can have right now i'm unstoppable unlimited you better believe it's terrorizing the kingdom of darkness right now i'm going in there alone with chains in my hand and a machete and i'm chopping off heads today let me tell you something we got insane to the membrane people that's out here claiming to be your doctors your gynecologists your lawyers, your investors, your event planner. Oh yes, your stylist. They're all some psychopaths. We gotta start questioning and start observing these disorders, these incomplete manifestations. We're gonna call them as they're being titled in this book. Yes, we gotta get on fire for this knowledge because we gotta know what we're dealing, what kind of enemy we're dealing with out here. You hear? We're doing this with love, not hate. Yeah? And now I've gotten that out. Thank God. I didn't have to curse or call out anybody or tell my business to nobody. And I feel amazing. Thank God. And God allowed me just to get this up out of me because I realized that I was been burying this. But it kept, it's coming up in my videos, this frustration. And we got to get this pain out. It's going to affect our lives in this way. I can't even read because I'm dealing with so much craziness out here. And all I want to do is focus. All right. So without further ado, because my video is starting to mess up, I'm going to reach out, take you all through this chapter. Now. These are incomplete manifestations or suggestions of the disorder. Part two. And I just feel so amazing right now. Really, God just lifted some weight off of me. It was just such a burden on me not to hold everything in. And I realized God wants me to sort of transmute this energy sometimes by being vulnerable and just letting y'all know sometimes it's okay not to be okay. We have our broken moments and we want to give up. But that's the crux of despair and prosperity. If we can believe that we're going to get to prosperity and we already are in prosperity, and then prosperity just automatically arises up within us because it's already there. And now I feel prosperous and I don't want to kill myself right now. No, I want to read. Degrees of disguise in essential pathology. The cases already reported are only a few among many hundreds whom I have observed. All of these people, when their records over the years are considered, strike one as remarkably similar. If the story of each could be told in detail, it is believed that the similarities would become more plain to any reader. It is contention of the present argument that this personality disorder shapes. Let me slow down. I feel myself trying to rush. You ain't got to rush, Cornelius. You got all day. These people can clock off this video at any time. I'm not forcing nobody to watch this video. But if you would like to know the disguises of how they're disguising their psychopathies out here and this pathology, stay tuned. I'm going to try to read a little bit more slower, though. Uh, this is not a horribly long chapter. It's only about seven or eight pages, so give me 15 minutes, okay? I'm lying. <laughs> give me like 30 minutes more, all right? 30 minutes, and I'll be out your hair, okay? The cases already reported are only a few among many hundreds whom I have observed. All of these people, when their records over the years are considered, strike one as remarkably similar. 
If the story of each could be told in detail, it is believed that the similarities would become more plain to any reader. It is the contention of the present argument that this personality disorder shapes and hardens into the outlines of a very definite clinical entity or reaction type into a pattern of disorder quite as recognizable and as, as real as any listed in psychiatric nomenclature. So why is it not in there in the DSM-5? <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. I have to go back in there and see. When a large number of such cases are considered carefully, the vagueness with which they are often regarded lessens and the type emerges certainly not less sharp than that type on which is based the concept of schizophrenia. But vague as the concept of schizophrenia remains and as various as are its manifestations, the schizophrenic when recognized is promptly called a patient with mental illness and treated as such. The psychopath, however, continues to be treated as a petty criminal at one point, as mentally ill person at the next, again, as well as a normal human being, all without the slightest change in the condition having occurred. I do not have any dogmatic advice as to the final or even a satisfactory way of successfully rehabilitating psychopaths, but believe that it is important for some consistent attitudes to be reached. In the hope of letting major features of the clinical picture emerge, more clearly, the following case reports are added. The persons already described are regarded as a typical examples showing the disorder and its distinct clinical manifestations of disability. Many of them are plainly unsuited for life in any community. Some are thoroughly incapacitated, in my opinion, as most unmistakable cases of schizophrenia. Whether this is to be regarded as a more or less willful contrariness or a sickness like schizophrenia in which the patient is to be protected and looked after may for the moment be put aside. In the report which follow, an effort has been made to present persons who are able to make some sort of adjustments in life and who, who may perhaps be regarded as less severely incapacitated and in varying degrees. These cases are offered as examples showing, in some respect, indications of the same disorder seen in the other. In them, however, it may be regarded as milder or more limited. The psychopathologic process, the deviation, or the arrest, if one likes it, as with the other, a process of affecting basic personal reactions. But here it has not altogether dominated the scene. It has not crowded ordinary successful functioning in the outer as aspects of work and social relations entirely out of the picture. Some of these, I feel, are definitely psychopaths, but milder cases, just as a patient still living satisfactorily in a community may be clearly a schizophrenic, but nevertheless able to maintain himself outside the shelter of a psychiatric hospital. Others might not deserve to be called psychopaths, but seem to show strong, if not consistent, tendencies and inner reactions characteristics of the group. These, in comparison with the definite psychopaths, may be regarded in the same relations as the queer schizoid personalities in whom one sees no technical psychosis, but very plainly the subjective essence of what is most distinctively schizoid, stand to the full-blown schizophrenic with his delusions, hallucinations, and unmistakable objective manifestations of psychosis. For example, will perhaps make this comparison more concrete. Recently, I have consulted by a man 32 years of age whose only complaint was a general listlessness, which he had noticed for about a year. He was a tall, rather slender person, slightly brittle in manner, and gave a definite impression of being not very much worried about his complaint. He lives with his parents in a small town where he makes an excellent salary as an expert in looking after electrical machinery in a large mill. 
He enjoys the title of engineering, though he had no formal education beyond that obtained in a rustic high school. So he's an engineer, although he has not obtained no education in high school. How is that possible? <laughs> For a psychopath, anything's possible, right? No formal education beyond high school, but he could be an engineer. Okay. I'll take that. Examination soon brought out the facts that he had never had sexual relations with a woman. He had, however, made the attempt not once, but mainly many times. The first attempting attempt being 12 years ago. He succeeds in having erections, but ejaculatory precox always occurs, and he fails entirely to affect an entrance. This situation, which most young men would find nothing short of distressing, he spoke about very casually. Questions concerning his attitude towards love and women brought rather stereotyped answers. He denied ever having sh scruples about fornication. To him, he was it was evident neither good nor bad his attempts to practice were it would seem made with a vague idea of doing what was the custom he professed to be interested in overcoming his inability to perform intercourse and show no embarrassment and little reticence about sexual questions but gave a strong impression of having only the shallowest interest his entire emotional life seemed perfunctory and without warmth Nothing in his experience could be elicited which brought forth any vividness of enthusiasm. He said that he was at present going with a girl whom he would like to marry, but his attitude towards her seemed without any tangible desire or eager anticipation. At times he gave a stilted, incongruous little laugh that sounded almost exactly like the manneristic laugh so familiar in actual schizophrenics. No delusional or hallucinations could be brought out. He had been leading an outwardly successful life and is fairly conscious and reliable member of society. The man mentioned above could certainly not be called legally incompetent at present, nor should he, in my opinion, be diagnosed as a case of schizophrenic with all the practical implications of being a, ju a judge, judged psychotic. He is mentioned in order to compare with him the patient who is psychotic and who is a frank case of schizophrenia. As an example of the developed schizophrenic, let us consider a former patient of mine who often sat for hours in a corner staring vacantly into space, his lips moving and silly grimacing smiles flitting across his face. Sometimes this man would not answer questions, apparently not even hurt hearing them. So absorbed was he in subjective contemplation. Again, he would grin glazily and wink his eyes or occasionally speak with passion about strange machinery in a distant city, which enemies whom he referred to merely as they were using to inject queer colors into his thoughts and something to make his make him ejaculate. This man at times suddenly attacked others. It was imminently necessary to keep him on a closed ward and under close supervision. And some of those to be pre presented, such a comparison probably would not be justified. Some might more accurately be thought of as showing scattered indications of such a disorder, suggestions of a disturbance central in nature, but well contained within an outer capsule of successful behavior, much deeper that the merely logical and theoretical rationality of the disabled psychopath. And those who consistently support themselves and pass regularly as acceptable members of the social group we can only be astonished at the difference between such technical outer adjustments and the indications of deeper pathologic features so similar to those found in the complete manifestations of the disorder. There are many patients who show relatively circumscribed antisocial behavior, 
are temporary episodes of gross general delinquencies who have, I feel, much less in common with the obvious psychopath than those who make a better outward impression, but who consistently show signs of inner subjective reactions typical of the clinically disabled patient. These patients with temporary or circumscribed maladjustments or self-defeating behaviors will be referred to later at greater lengths. They are mentioned here to distinguish them not only from the fully manifested psychopaths, but also from those who over the years show more subtle indications of widespread and intractable, intractable defects or deviations and essential personal reactions and subjective evaluations. <laughs> How do you know the difference? The psychopathologic process or state, which I believe is seriously disabling the patient already presented, may be regarded as affecting in part and in varying degrees those yet to be discussed. It may now be added that I believe that in these personalities designated as partially or inwardly affected, a deep-seated disorder often exists. The true difference between them and the psychopaths who continually go to jails or the psychiatric hospitals is that they keep up far better and more consistent our appearance of being normal. This outward appearance may include business or professional careers that continue in a sense successful and which are truly successful when measured by financial rewards or by the casual observer's opinions of real accomplishments. And all I got to do in this society is just tell you what it means to be a successful, to be abundant, right? All the while knowing that they're neurotic and have these schizoid personalities and these personality anomalies that are antisocial and maladjusted because they cannot uh, assimilate them in any other context in the society, right? So now you're working for some, some mysterious manufacturing company uh, and you're here on conference, right? <laughs> yeah, what do you do for a living again? <laughs> no, you got autism spectrum disorder and I can clearly see this <laughs> with your colorful socks. <laughs> Peekaboo. But you can make 300 grand, right? Selling a, 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 a logistics product for a manufacturing company that's obscure. <laughs> I'll give you an example of this. Anybody ever heard of Modex? Yeah. Nation's largest material handling logistics and supply chain association. <laughs> now, this is full of, full of Autism spectrum, uh, neurodivergence, <laughs> basically. Yeah. <coughs> There's another one that's actually a black owned business. I also think it's also just have a bunch of uh, neurodivergence working for them. I can't think of the name right now though. The psychopathologic process or state, which I believe is seriously disabling the patient already presented may be regarded as affecting in part and in varying degrees those yet to be discussed. It may now be added that I believe that in these personalities designated as partially or inwardly affected, that, that there's a very deep-seated disorder often existing. The true difference between them and the psychopaths who continually go to the jails or to psychiatric hospitals is that they keep up a far more and more better consistent outward appearance of being normal. This is what I've been telling y'all that they're doing. They're just disguising these psychopathic tendencies. They're just hiding behind these professional careers by right? working for companies like Modex and stuff. But they're all psychopaths. This outward appearance may include business or professional careers that continue in a sense successful and which are truly successful when measured by financial rewards or by the casual observer's opinion of real accomplishments. 
it must be remembered that even the most severely and an obviously disabled psychopaths present a technical appearance of sanity, often one of high intellectual capacities and not infrequently success succeeds in business or professional activities for short periods, sometimes for considerable periods. I maintained, however, that the actual but concealed personality disorganization in a deeper sense is, in some of the cases now to be described, also far-reaching and profound. All they, although they occasionally appear on casual inspection as successful members of communities, as able lawyers, executives, or physicians, they do not, it seems, succeed in the sense of finding satisfaction or fulfillment in their accomplishments. Nor do they, when one knows the full story, appear to find this in any other ordinary healthy activity. By healthy activities, we do not need to postulate what is considered moral or decent by the average man, but may include any type of asocial or even criminal activity, so long as it so long as the motivation can be translated into terms of ordinary human striving, selfish or unselfish. <laughs> the chief difference between the patient already discussed and some of those to be mentioned lies perhaps in whether the mask or facade of the psychobiologic health is intended, extended into superficial material success. So what would the psychobiologic help? So grandiosity can extend into all this ambition and motivation to want to get rich and climb the social ladder. Is that what that would, how that would extend over into the psychobiologic health and how it extends to superficial material success? This is how it would... Yeah, so a psychopath could be one to be successful at all costs. So he's writing books to be the number one bestseller or something. That would have that's how the psychobiologic health that is being masked and facade around his narcissism and the amorite spirits that want fame and self glamorizations and stuff. That is how it extends into the superficial material success. So to everybody, it looks like he's normal. He wrote books. He's competent. No, the mother is a psychopath and a narcissist, and he's trying to win at all costs and take anybody down uh, on his rampage to success. But we got to understand these differences in these personalities that are being masked and facade around. I'm successful. Look at me. I can strive. No, buddy. I believe that the relative state of this outward appearance is not necessarily consistent with the degree to which the person is really affected by the essential disorder. An analogy is at hand if we compare the catatonic schizophrenic with, with his obvious psychosis to the impressively intelligent paranoid patient who outwardly is much more normal and may even appear better adjusted than the average person. The catatonic schizophrenic is more likely to recover and despite his appearance is often less seriously disordered than the paranoic. It becomes difficult to imagine how much of the sham and hollowness which cynical commentators have immorally pointed out in life may come from contact and serious issues with persons affected in some degree by the disorder we are trying to describe. The fake poet who really feels little the painter who, despite his loftiness, really had his eye on the lucrative fad of his day. The fashionable clergyman who, despite his burning eloquence, <coughs> sorry about that, where was I? The fake poet who really feels little, the painter who, despite his loftiness, 
really had his eye on the lucrative fad of his day, the fashionable clergyman who, despite his burning eloquence or his lively cast, uh, castigations of the devil, is seriously concerned chiefly with his advancements, the flirt who can readily awaken love and cannot feel love or recognize its absence, parents who, despite smooth convictions that they have only the child's welfare at heart, actually rejects him except as it suits their own petty or selfish aims. All these types so familiar in literature and in anybody's experience may be as they are because of a slight affliction with the personality disorder now under discussion. Ooh, yes. This is these narcissists that are in our family members that leave us so fractured and broken and we can't figure out what happened to me. How has all this neglect damaged me to this degree? We're wondering why the pain is so much, right? <laughs> yeah, because these these contradictions in their personalities due to their psychopathy. I believe it probable that many persons outwardly imposing yet actually of insignificant emotional import really are so affected. Are they really? Hmm. Let us not, however, attempt to explain all pretense. Let's go, testicles. Damn. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I had an any and not an Audi. <laughs> How much do I got? Oh, this is the last page. <laughs> I'm taking y'all do so much drama this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let us not, however, attempt to explain all pretense and all frauds on this basis. <laughs> there are many other psychopathologic reactions beside the one in which we are now concerned. And these, too, are capable of producing such results. Let us be especially chary in assuming this limitation in our enemies and in our, in our, in our neighbors. The mechanisms of reaction formation, projection, rationalizations and many other distorting influences work in all of us at the behest of envy, of piquet, and prejudice. It is not easy to estimate the degree of our neighbor's sincerity, the worth of an artist's production, the clergyman's real motive. Some of the episodes or symptoms mentioned in the brief sketches that follow may present less profound inner disturbances than anything probably belonging with that of the real psychopath. Many of the acts might be isolations occur in the lives of people who at length achieve excellent adjustments, not only externally, but within. The material to follow is followed by primarily for the purpose of making a diagnosis of psychopathic personality, but in illustration of features which specifically characterize the psychopath and which may, against a background of better general adjustments, merge, emerge a sharper clarity. What can be learned from the fantasy or dream in the normal person? From prejudice or many socially admired forms of self-renunciation has many of, of value in psychiatric efforts to, under, to understand schizophrenia and other grave personality disorders. Many of the characteristics and reactions seen in extreme exaggeration among the psychotic appear sometimes to be utilized by those of great talent and excellent psychiatric status in the successful pursuit of valuable personal and social aim. It is unlikely that the specific reactions of the psychopath can be directly utilized for important positive accomplishments. It is believed, however, that many persons in bewilderment and frustration fall into similar reactions temporarily and eventually. Hmm. Because that's where I'm feeling at right now. Frustrations and bewilderment. So maybe I'm experiencing a temporary psychosis right now. Because I'm falling into similar reactions temporarily and eventually finding better means of adaptation, profit from what has been learned through the pathologic experience. The following accounts are given. Then for what light 
they may reflect on the serious clinical disorder manifested in the previous cases. So I'm excited to take y'all further on in another video. Other psychopath as a businessman is going to be the underlying, more subtle, less overt and obvious signs. These is what we're dealing with. I want to keep stressing this, guys. This is what we're dealing with. It's under underneath. It's narcissism. It's psychopathy. It could be schizophrenia. It's all kind of hosts of personality disorders. And they're being masked, camouflaged behind success. Uh, and that is the sorcery of how mental illness is being cloaked in our in our societies, which is why nobody's changing and this demonic male is still being maintained. Hey guys. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. If you're ready to go through the rest of these case studies, I'm going to read probably the businessman. And yeah.